Hello to all physics enthusiasts and experimenters. This is Andrei Shketnikov. Recently, we have made several videos about the physics of wind turbines. And so far, these have been propeller-type wind turbines with a horizontal axis. But of course, our discussion would be incomplete if we did not consider the so-called Darius rotor, a wind turbine which consists of a vertical axis and vertical blades that rotate around this axis. They come in this kind of design, small with three blades, and there are also large ones with two blades that resemble ribbons. In our videos, we are not really dealing with wind energy, and certainly not with ecology, but with physics. And we are answering physical questions. And in relation to this wind turbine, the fundamental physics question that arises for me, and I think for anyone who looks at it, is this. And why does this thing rotate at all? And why does it have a preferred direction of rotation in the incoming wind flow? Everything seems symmetrical, doesn't it? And in our video, we will definitely try to answer this question. And just like in the first video of this series where we conducted experiments with paper helicopters, now for analogy and some understanding, we will look at this design consisting of two blades with two tips. This design auto-rotates excellently in flight. Now, I will launch it for better understanding. But everything happened very quickly indeed, so let's watch it again in slow motion. And from the side. And here it descends at a fixed angle to the horizon and rotates at a constant angular velocity. And since our flying apparatus descends straight and uniformly, it will be convenient for us, as we often do, to switch to a reference frame associated with this apparatus, where its axis is stationary. Then we see the airflow coming from below. Let's arrange the forces. This is the force of gravity. It is directed downward. This aerodynamic force balances the force of gravity, and therefore it is directed upwards. Well, this flow, among other things, maintains the rotation of the rotor at a constant angular speed. And now I will perform another trick. I will assume that this system, which is rotating in place, is the Darius rotor that we see from above, in the sky, and it is quite fascinating. Well then, we will fix it on a stationary axis, which is simply anchored to the ground. And here we have an incoming airflow, but the forces, by the way, are still the same. This is the aerodynamic force, and this arrow here represents the reaction of the support, the reaction of the axis acting on the rotating rotor and holding it in place so that the aerodynamic force doesn't blow it away. And again, this flow that hits the rotor makes it rotate, first accelerating it and then maintaining a constant speed. We need to understand how this happens and what causes it. And for this purpose, we will conduct the following experiment. I have manufactured a rotor with three blades and installed it in a frame so that it can rotate freely. The rotation speed of the rotor will be measured by photo gates. And here I have a pipe from which a stream will emerge, but it expands to approximately 15 centimeters in diameter opposite the rotor. And when I simply turn on the air, unfortunately, the rotor does not rotate. It is completely stuck at a dead point and needs a bit more, a little push. And now it gradually starts to accelerate and rotates faster and faster and more rapidly. Well, now we will see how this acceleration occurs. And for this, I will record the dependence of the rotation speed on time. I press record. I turn on the pipe. It started rotating on its own. At first, the acceleration is quite slow, but when the rotation speed reaches 10 revolutions per second, the acceleration sharply increases. And now the rotor has entered the autorotation mode and is rotating at a frequency of approximately 24 revolutions per second. And thus we essentially learned that the rotor has three modes of rotation. If we move it out of the dead point, it accelerates first quite slowly, 
Then it enters its working mode and accelerates quickly until it reaches the auto rotation mode, at which point its rotation speed no longer increases. Now let us determine the exact linear speed of the rotor blades in auto rotation mode. The rotor was rotating at a frequency of 24 revolutions per second. The distance from the blades to the axis is 3 centimeters. Well, we take 2PR, multiply it by the frequency, and get a linear speed of 5 meters per second. And of course, it is desirable to compare it with the speed at which the airflow from this tube impacts the rotor. For this purpose, I remove the spinner from the frame and insert the pitot tube here. I start the airflow and see that the speed of this flow is currently observed to be approximately 5.5 meters per second. And therefore, it almost exactly matches the speed at which the blades of our rotor were rotating. And here I must say that the aerodynamic quality of the blades of our rotor is quite low. And the blades of real wind turbines with a Darius rotor are designed to have as high an aerodynamic quality as possible. Very high. And this leads to a result that may initially seem counterintuitive. And it consists in the fact that the spun rotor moves in such a way that the linear speed of its blades exceeds the wind speed several times, as can be seen, for example, in this computer simulation. And we need to understand how this is possible, and what moments of forces spin the rotor to such speeds. It is clear that when the blades are in such a position, the angle of attack is 0 or 180 degrees for the lower blade. And no aerodynamic forces perpendicular to the blades arise in this case. But let's see exactly what happens when the blades turn 90 degrees and become perpendicular to the flow. In this scenario, it is important to understand that the blades are not at rest, but are moving at speeds significantly greater than the speed of the flow itself. Now, let's illustrate the movement of air relative to the blades. The green arrows indicate the flow speed impacting the blades due to their rotation. The blue arrows represent wind speeds, while the red arrows indicate the resulting airflow speed impacting the blades. Now the angle of attack is no longer zero, and the blades are subjected to lift forces directed perpendicular to the flow velocity. And we see that these forces, which are responsible for the rotation of the rotor, have components that spin the rotor. And when the rotor has not two blades, but more, for example three, there is always a blade that is not in the dead spot and spins the rotor. And when it spins up sufficiently, we can connect an electric generator to it and convert wind energy into electrical energy. And now it's time for our traditional final question, and this time it will be as follows. You all saw that when we let our rotor spin freely. At some point it transitioned into autorotation mode and stopped accelerating further. The question is, what causes this limitation in rotational frequency? Write your thoughts on this matter in the comments to this video on YouTube.